Oops. That's zero. Yes. So uh, just to highlight a few um, differences over here, it sounds like uh, the Animal Health Act and the uh, Public Health Act here has um, BLASTA on its list, whereas just recently uh, in Manitoba, we actually took um, BLASTA off the animal health list. Um, and so that, that's an indication as to, even though it's in an endemic area, uh, it's, it's still uh, not considered that much of a, a human risk. Otherwise, we do work close enough uh, to have a little bit of influence there, and we would have probably insisted that it stays on. Um, so yes, Manitoba, I agree, is definitely considered a endemic area, but um, in, in our circles, we tend to think that Kenora or White, uh, the, the lake of the woods, uh, White Shell, uh, is the hyperendemic area, because looking at the literature, the um, rates in, in general Manitoba, or most of Manitoba, sit at around about um, 0.62 per 100,000 uh, cases annually, and yet in uh, the, the White Shell, which is uh, the, the northern part of uh, Ontario where a lot of Manitobans have, have cottages, uh, it actually sits at around about seven cases per 100,000 per, per year, so uh, 10 times higher. And um, then if you look in, in the literature, uh, some, some of Jeff's literature, um, I, um, <laughs> Uh, th th there's definitely indication that it is spreading across um, uh, across the prairies, um, and so going back to to Hein's question, um, what is the risk of it eventually arriving here? I mean, that's definitely something that has to be thought about and considered. So, um, we we have not um, found any correlation uh, between. Uh, animals or pets that ended up getting it and then, and then their owners, but uh, definitely there is an occupational uh, link. And so, uh, uh, and, I th and that was part of my, my follow-up in, in once we found out about the panda, uh, because I was very concerned that the people that uh, were working in the zoo uh, could have also be, been exposed. So. So that's, um, uh, it, it, the rates have essentially been very stable. We've actually got literature that goes all the way back to uh, 1988 and, and, and we end up with around about that 11, 12 cases per year in, in Manitoba, uh, pre pretty much for the last 20, uh, 25 years. So, so that's reassuring. And um, interestingly how it's, uh, you have this, the, the spikes in the winter and it's probably links to the fact that everyone's away in the summer um, doing their gardening out at the cottage and it has this long latency period and so they only start with these symptoms um, uh, once, once they're back in the city. Um, uh, they may have had some symptoms during, during, the, um, during the summer, obviously. And, uh, um, oh, and then also the, the age uh, component and actually those are predominantly males as well, so that also talks to the, the um, occupational uh, um, epidemiology. So this is, I, I put, put this up to link back to the panda. So the construction was all in this area and it's been going on for a long time. There still is construction ongoing, um, uh, predominantly for, for the uh, the polar bear exhibits. However, the pandas are in this area. So it, it, it's quite possible that um, uh, the, the, there was exposure just aerosolized from the construction that ended up uh, getting the panda exposed. Uh, so, so the potential of the panda actually picking the, the uh, blasto up just from within its own environment is uh, less likely. It was probably more linked to the fact that there had been this ongoing construction. Um, and it's, I said it's, it's finished, but there still, there still is some, some additional construction that's going, going on. Um, so going back to um, our database we, uh, and my investigation, um, uh, we didn't have any linkages with uh, cases uh, 
um, that had worked in the zoo. Um, yes, there were, were males, um, uh, but none were construction workers and, and none had a, an epi link to the zoo. So that was reassuring. Um, and uh, then going, I, I, <laughs> Manitoba is fairly small. So we have one expert um, uh, for blasto who essentially sees all of, all of our blasto cases. Um, and I'm, uh, he's one of our ID specialists there, and so I'm, I'm uh, 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 very good friends with him, so automatically I just pick up the phone and talk to him. And he says he, he was able to uh, inform me anecdotally as to, uh, so, so to give me additional information to, to our database that isn't necessarily or always apparent in, in a, uh, in a uh, EPI database. And um, so, yeah, exactly the same question as Hein, or in, is, is, is there an unrecognized outbreak within Manitoba? I, we, we haven't found one um, so far, but uh, the, 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 the panda was definitely something that made us wonder um, and, and ask those additional questions. And so that might be a, a situation, considering, I mean, I was in Winnipeg this morning, and <laughs> here I am. So people bring their dogs, bringing, um, uh, bringing the disease. It's definitely possible. Good. Thank you. Um, so we're running into our break.